Good afternoon, everyone. We appreciate you all joining us. We have Mr. Barrington Huntley here with NCAA Clearinghouse to discuss to discuss eligibility as well as, well as registering your students for NCAA. Uh, we, uh, we understand that you guys have a lot of things going on, but we do know that your students are important to you. And again, this is for our student athletes. Um, we hope that if you have any questions, um, please take the time at the end of the presentation to ask Mr. Huntley. He'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. And again, I'm Anita Clark and welcome to Decatur City Schools um, NCAA Parent Information Meeting this afternoon. All right, Mr. Huntley, we're gonna turn it over to you and you're welcome to go ahead and begin your presentation. Cool, cool. All right, let me see if I can get this thing going. So, all right. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Ms. Clark, can you just give me a shout to see if you can see this? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So uh, my name is Barrington Huntley, and I'm an assistant director of outreach and strategic partnerships. In my role, what I do is I do outreach um, and build relationships with the high school community. Really want to make sure that the high school community has all of the most accurate and up-to-date information so that you all obviously can help your student athletes, student athletes can help themselves um, so that no student athlete misses out on an opportunity. We don't want a student athlete getting to the end of the road and figuring out, man, they took the wrong classes or, you know, they didn't do something right in the process that prevents them from, you know, going to University of Alabama or Auburn or UAB or any other Division One or Division Two school. So, um, what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, what first is the NCA Eligibility Center. You know, it, it's you hear it called Clearinghouse Eligibility Center. It's the same exact thing, um, but I want to go over what the Eligibility Center is. I want to talk about that first step of registration. Um, then talk about some of the academic standards that students have to meet in order to be eligible to get their scholarship. And then at the end, I'll have a slide that has a bunch of resources for you all as well. Um, I can also uh, provide a PowerPoint of this presentation or a virtual, or excuse me, a PDF version of this presentation so that you can have those resources on hand. You'll see a lot of links and QR codes in this presentation. When you get that PDF version, all of those links and PDFs or all of those links and QR codes will will be you will be able to uh, be used when you get that PDF version. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is what is the NCAA Eligibility Center. So what we are is the department within the NCAA that certifies high school student athletes to be eligible to play Division One or Division Two college athletics. So very simple. We're also really looking at two types of, uh, there's really two types of things that we're evaluating. The first is gonna be the academic requirements. We wanna make sure that students are making the right grades in high school um, so that they can be set up for success when they do go to college. And then we also have the amateurism component. We wanna make sure that students are still quote unquote amateurs, they're not, they haven't signed a professional contract or they haven't necessarily taken money to play their sport. Obviously, there's NIL. That's a little bit of a gray area now. But still, with all of these NIL deals, these students are being paid based on their name, image and likeness. It's not necessarily tied directly. Um, they're not being paid to perform their sport, which, you know, again, uh, sounds like semantics to, to some, um, but that is that is definitely um, the rule that that is in place. A couple fast facts about the NCAA. You know, you see a lot of big numbers here. Over 1,100 colleges and universities, over 500,000 student athletes. When I see this slide, the main thing that sticks out to me is the amount of opportunities that are provided to young people based on their participation in sport. So you all play a huge role in making sure that those students are taking full advantage of all of these opportunities that are available to them. Um, so 
please don't take that responsibility lightly. Please understand that these types of opportunities, these types of opportunities could really um, change lives. I mean, you know, it's the, I'm a former student athlete myself. I played football at New Mexico State. Um, and I still have so many connections that have, that really benefit me today. Um, I also went to school for free. That's something that I don't have to worry about. You see all this stuff going on with, um, you know, Joe Biden canceling debt, that kind of stuff. I don't even have to worry about that because of the opportunity that I was given to play division one college football. So the first step to make sh making sure that your students are going to be on track to play Division One or Division Two sports, any sport, is making sure that they're registered with the NCAA Eligibility Center. Um, so there's really going to be two types of accounts that uh, that a student athlete has to register for, um, and how they do that is they go to eligibilitycenter.org. They click on the register button right there in the middle of the screen, and then that starts the process of registration. Um, the first account type is going to be a free profile page. I recommend all students to register for this one at first, especially if they're in eighth, ninth, tenth grade. They haven't started being recruited yet. Register for that free profile page account. You know, this is also for students that are maybe interested in playing Division three. We don't certify Division three student athletes, um, but you know you want to make sure to start here. I, I would tell at the beginning of at the beginning of uh, eighth grade or the beginning of ninth grade, just getting this free profile page. It will be super beneficial because it signs you up to receive emails from us that will go over everything that I'm talking about today. It will also send uh, you also receive emails that will help you become a better student. Maybe some time management things, um, and it really it will really also allow you to have your NCAA ID number. That's a number that's gonna be used later on once students are getting recruited. The next type of account that we have, and this account is going to be required for all students that, um, that want to play division one or division two. So if you, if you have a student that is gonna go play at the University of Alabama, they have to have this certification account. And basically what this is, it allows us to certify your student athletes academically and, and from an amateurism standpoint. So you would register with us. Um, and I recommend this account for students that are being recruited, that are actively being recruited. So if you have colleges that are calling you, if you have colleges that are emailing you, colleges that are um, talking to you in your DMs via social media, this is a type of account that you're going to need because it's going to be um, part of the process to help get you certified. You also notice down there before a student can take an official visit, before they can sign an NLI, or um, you know they have to have that certification account. So before they can sign their scholarship agreement, before they can take an official visit, which is a visit paid for by the school, they have to have this account. There is a registration fee, and um, this is actually a typo. It just changed on September 1st. The registration fee for domestic students now is actually $100. I'll make sure that I correct that um, when I send out this presentation via PDF, but did want to make sure that just changed on September 1st. So um, I got to update my presentation for sure. Next, we have the academic standards that students have to meet in order to be eligible to get their scholarship in order to be eligible to practice, and then in order to be eligible to compete. So in Division I, there's a couple of different rules that students have to meet, right? So the first thing that, the, there, there's really gonna be three requirements. The first is gonna be core courses. They have to complete a certain amount of core courses throughout their high school career. That number that they have to complete is 16. So 16 core courses throughout their high school career. You see that first bullet there, 10, 7. 10 of those 16 have to be completed before the student starts their seventh semester or their senior year in high school. So making sure that they're taking the right courses is number one. The next thing that they need to do is earn at least a 2.3 GPA in those 16 core courses. And then finally, they have to graduate from high school. So very simple. We're concerned about 
which courses you're taking and how many of those you're taking, what is your GPA in those courses, and then whether or not you graduate high school. When you hear me say 16 core courses, what I am really talking about is these big ones right here. So we're focused on English, math, science, social studies, foreign languages. Those are going to be the types of courses that we're looking at on a student's transcript uh, when we're determining if they're eligible to get all of those things that I mentioned about you know, their scholarship, practicing, and competing. So you see a breakdown here of the 16. You add those up, it equals that 16. Notice there's four years of English. That means that they're going to have to have in English all four years of high school. So um, something to think about as you are putting together the schedules and you're thinking about the types of classes that you want to take. Now, Division Two is a little bit different. I always say Division One. If you meet the Division One standard, you're going to meet the Division Two standard. Um, you see here it's a little bit simpler. We are still focused on the same types of things, but it's a little bit of a less standard. So you have there's no 107 requirement. So there's no requirement that you have to complete a certain amount of courses before you start your senior year of high school. You just have to complete 16 by the time you start college. Uh, also, the GPA requirement in those 16 is a little bit lower. It's a 2.2 instead of a 2.3. We still need the graduation requirement as well. For a Division II qualifier, this is that subject area breakdown. Again, notice it's a little bit different, only three years of English. Um, so uh, again, I will make sure that I send out a PDF version of this presentation so that you have it. But uh, this is really uh, the breakdown for a Division I qualifier. It still adds up to the 16, just a little bit different in Division II. Next, we have test scores. So um, test scores are not a requirement right now for students that are going to be enrolling in college for the students that just started in college this year and then also the students that are going to be enrolling in college starting in 2023. Um, there's also a that was all that was just due to COVID you know I think we're still kind of feeling the effects of that so I wanted to make sure that students weren't being unnecessarily penalized for something that was outside of their control. But I will note, you see that second bullet there that says test score task force recommendation. The recommendation right now um, from a committee that was put together by the NCAA um, and the membership schools was the recommendation was to permanently remove the test score from initial eligibility purposes. That is something that's going to be voted on in January of 2023. So. That's the recommendation. It hasn't been voted on yet. It's not official, but the, you know, kind of giving you some inside baseball, it looks like that is actually going to be removed. How does that affect um, admission requirements? So, you know, what this means is the NCAA will not require, if you want to play at the University of Alabama and be certified, we're not going to require a test score. However, the University of Alabama might for admission into their college, they might still require the test score. So um, as you're going through the process, making sure that you're understanding those admission requirements is gonna be critical here. Um, I've been telling students, if you have the opportunity to take the test, just go ahead and do it. Um, at this point, it can only help you. There's no way that it can hurt you. Um, something to also keep in mind, in addition to those admission requirements is that if you have a student that's maybe applying for uh, scholarships, like academic scholarships, those academic scholarships might also require the test score. So uh, again, just making sure you understand the full picture of what's going to be required to get A, get the most money to help, and then B, um, to get admitted into the college of your choice. Um, so this this these two QR codes go over all the other um, initial eligibility requirements, goes a little bit more in depth. Um, right now, as we stand here, the test score is a requirement for students that will be enrolling um, in, in fall of 24. But after that vote in January, it could be taken away as a requirement. And it looks like that is what's going to happen. But until, it's, uh, until the final vote has happened, the test score is going to be a requirement once the COVID 
uh, flexibility is over. And then tons and tons and tons of resources. So um, these are going to be the main types of things that I think, you know, for, for the high school community, you want to make sure that um, you have this COVID-19 FAQ, that's going to be huge. Um, and then as well as the guide for the college bound student athlete, that's also something that would help parents, you know, navigate the recruiting process, you know, um, this guide for the college bound student athlete, it goes over everything that I talked about here today. It also talks about, um, it also goes over some more of the recruiting aspect of things um, that, that you're going to need there. So we also have the initial eligibility flyer as well. Um, but I think the biggest things to remember, if you are trying to advise a student, if I was talking to a student, um, the biggest things to remember are that um, the biggest things to remember are that they have to hit, they have to register with the NCAA. They go to eligibilitycenter.org to register. They're going to need a profile page. That's free. And then once they start getting recruited, they're going to need that certification account. Um, those are going to be the big ones. And then from there, uh, they have to make sure that they're meeting those initial eligibility requirements, making sure that they're taking the right courses, making sure they're taking enough of the right courses, um, and then earning a, earning at least a 2.3 or 2.2 GPA and then graduate high school. Um, it's pretty, pretty simple stuff. You know, I think if, you know, if I was able to do it, I feel like any um, student that you're dealing with should be able to do it as well. Um, we also have social media. I would recommend following us on social media, especially on Twitter. Everything um, that we have coming out of the Eligibility Center, any update that we have coming out of the Eligibility Center will be included in on our Twitter page. So please, please, please make sure that you're doing that. Um, we also have these two lines. So I know, understand there could be counselors on this call. There could also be um, parents on this call as well. These two lines. So this would be, you know, for counselors to call. And then we have this one for families to call as well. Any counselor on this call, um, please subscribe to the high school newsletter. That's going to keep, help keep you. Um, that's going to help keep you in the loop as well. I, I believe parents can apply or apply to see that newsletter as well. Um, so I would just at least try anybody on this call who's interested in staying up to date with anything going on with the eligibility center, I would encourage them to register for that high school newsletter um, so that you can you can get that information as it comes out. But those are really the big things that we have here. Um, let me see if I can't get back here. So for me, you know, um, those are, like I said, those are really the things that, that you need to make sure I, if there are any questions, I can go in more depth about certain things that are out there. But again, just wanted to inform you and arm you with those tools that will help you, um, that will help you advise your student, the student athletes in your life. And maybe there are some on the call as well. I will. I do have a few questions, you know, I'm going to okay. open it up to parents, but I'm going to hope I may be able to, to, to ask a few questions that may help. Um, is there is there a way for the the waiver to be um, I'm sorry for the fees to be waived if a student is receiving free or reduced lunch or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I apologize for uh, skipping over that part. There mm -hmm. is a fee waiver. So if you have a student that has a demonstrated financial need, let's say they you know like you said they get free or reduced lunch, um, the counselor can go into the high school portal and add the fee waiver to their account, can request that be added. It's done on an honor system. You're not gonna have to submit any paperwork or anything like that, but um, you just go into the high school portal. And Anita, if you would like, I can, um, I can, when I send you the PDF version of this presentation, I can also include um, a resource that we have that will show you exactly how to do that. Yes, that would be wonderful, please. Because um, I, I would definitely share the, the PDF um, the presentation in PDF form with our counselors. And of course, if there are any parents that would like me to send you the um, the PDF, please um, feel free to email me at Anita, A-N-I-T-A dot Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E at D-C-S dot E-D-U. And I will share the presentation with you. Mm -hmm. Second thing, we've heard before with um, 
with NCAA, there's a, a slide and tail thing. If you have a certain GPA versus and a certain ACT score, is that still something that's um that's applicable? For yeah. Students? So right now the test score is kind of weird, right? And I touched mm -hmm. on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. It it's not a requirement for students that are going to be graduating this school year. So mm -hmm. if you have a 23 grad, it's not a requirement. And it's going to be voted on in January to see if that requirement is removed permanently. So Do you right think now, that was that? I was going to ask for students that choose, of course, we have many of them that will choose to take the ACT. They can still submit that score. And will that sliding scale piece be utilized for those students that choose to submit it? Or is it just really not? A, it's not it's not even going to be a. Um, the, okay. sli the sliding scale is still the only the only people that it applies to right now would be students that were going to be graduating in 24 or beyond. Mm -hmm. okay. But in January, that what I just said mm -hmm. might not apply anymore. Because once the test score is taken away, the sliding scale goes away. Because all the sliding scale stated was the higher your GPA, the lower the test score we're going to require and vice mm -hmm. versa. So if you had a low GPA, we're going to require a higher test score. But if there's no test score anymore. We're just looking at that minimum GPA. Okay. And if, could you also speak to the um, who's responsible for, for entering the grades into the portal? Is that something that, and I'm just kind of, this is, I'm just really throwing a question out there just to kind of inform parents and, yeah. and um, any of our staff that are on. Um, who's responsible for, for inserting those grades into the portal? Um, is it the parent, you know, is it the student? Is it the, the team, you know, the counselor? And, uh, and, when you just tell us who that should be, then what role or responsibility should our parents and students have in maintaining or in staying abreast of what's in that portal? Yeah, so the high school portal is going to be where those tests or where those uh, grades are entered, and that's going to be on the counselor. Um, but, you know, and there is, you know, you just go into the high school portal, you're able to look up a student and then submit their transcripts. You also, you know, that student might receive some emails as well as far as, hey, you might have some notifications that you might get or tasks, as they're called, that, um, hey, you're, you're missing a transcript from, you know, uh, Washington High School, you know, so, but it will be up to the counselor to upload that. Mm -hmm. Parents play a huge role in making sure that they're understanding what those requirements are and then, you know, holding their students accountable when it comes to making the grades, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing. You just saw the grades, 2.3 GPA, 16 core. If you take four core courses, all four years of high school, you'll hit that 16, you'll hit the 10, seven, you do well in those courses, at least a 2.3. I mean, that's what, like a C plus average, you know, you should be C my, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should you should be good. So um, obviously you want to shoot better for that. There are admission requirements to think about, too. If you have a 2.3 and you want to go to Stanford, that might not be required, you know, uh, or that might not make you might not make the cut there. You know, mm -hmm. so those are things that you got to think about about as well. Do we have any additional questions? You all feel free to. Um to unmute yourselves, or you can type your questions in the chat, and I'll be happy to read those for you. Are there any additional questions concerning eligibility with NCAA? All right. Well, you know, of course, if you guys have additional questions, please feel free to feel free to email me. Um, and Mr. Um, Barrington has given you his information so that you can call um, NCAA if you need additional information or you just want to inquire about a few things. But just know that we are um, always wanting to make sure that our parents and our staff members are informed. Uh, I will definitely share the PowerPoint presentation with anyone who um, emails me and we'll also upload it to our Facebook, I'm sorry, upload it to our website and I will share it with the council so it can be uploaded to the council's pages as well. Okay. Again, are there any additional questions? All right. Well, Mr. Barrington is um, leaving us this, uh, I think, tomorrow. He will um, be 
moving on to the next chapter so he will no longer be our regional rep but we have been definitely enjoyed working with him and we appreciate you mr barrington and we wish you well um but i just want to say to everyone thank you all for joining us and that concludes our parent meeting for ncaa um eligibility thank you all so much good luck to you all thank right you. bye bye y'all thanks for having me thanks so much thank you mr Huntley. that was very informative thank you <laughs>